What's up, everyone? Lex DeVille here. Today, we are talking about freelancing versus audiobooks as a way to make money. What's going on, everyone? Jumping into this video, kind of got some cool things going on. I've got a whole new setup. I, I It looks crazy in here. It kind of looks like I don't know. It reminds me of Dr. Octavius with like octopus arms hanging down everywhere. I got the pop filter with an octopus arm. The camera's on an octopus arm. The lights hanging down on an octopus arm. And uh, trying to get this setup fixed up a little bit because I didn't like where the camera position was. It sits on top of my monitor and the monitor is freaking too tall. So wires everywhere. But we're talking about audiobooks, we're talking about freelancing, and which one of these is going to maybe be worth your time, more worth your time, if you are trying to make money. And so I thought we'd get into this a little bit and just explore it, see where it goes. Technically, audiobooks could be considered freelancing in a way. It's very similar in many regards. Audiobook world, you know, let's talk about freelance real quick. You're applying to clients' jobs, you're doing any combination variety of tasks you could be doing web design copywriting you guys know the spiel i mean this whole channel has been about freelancing on the audiobook side you are similarly applying to gigs you're applying to jobs uh, but you do it a little bit differently because you audition for books so instead of just writing a proposal you might write a proposal and send an, a voice audition so that's a little bit different than what you're probably used to with the freelance world so a couple things First of all, let's talk about getting to money, the path to money. Uh, with freelancing, it's much, much faster. It's much faster. If you need money like right now, then freelancing is probably the way to go because with audiobooks, there's such a learning curve. Now, there's a learning curve with freelancing too, but you can use skills that you already have that you're already particularly skilled in to go and make money fast with freelancing. I mean, you can go, anybody can go write a blog post. It's really not that hard. You can go out there and do that and make some money. Uh, you can make a full-time income in a month with freelancing if you are someone who is driven and ambitious enough and intelligent enough, cunning enough maybe to go out there and get those gigs. With audiobooks, it's a little bit different. You're going to audition. You might get responses quickly, but the difference is that the the pay rates are set up a little bit differently, first of all. And second of all, it takes a lot of time. Audiobooks take so much time to record and narrate and produce. And because of that, I don't see it as a particularly useful path to pay if you need money in the short term. So that's probably one of the biggest differences. Now, in the long term, one of the benefits of audiobooks over freelancing is that it can be a passive income. If you're doing revenue split jobs where you're splitting the money with the narr or with the author, then it can become a passive income source which builds up over time and you may not have to do any extra work later on. With freelance, you don't usually get that. You don't usually have as much or any passive income for the most part. Rarely do I meet people who have passive income from freelance jobs. But the point is, short-term money, go the freelance route, go over to Upwork, go to LinkedIn or wherever and find your freelance gigs, write some copy, get some money coming in cash flow quickly. Uh, audiobook route is much slower. It's going to take you a lot more time. You're not going to get paid until after you've finished narrating the book and after the book is edited and produced and ready to go live on the platforms. So if you're needing money, you know, you can figure, let's say you, you do a five hour book, that's going to take you at least a week to narrate, maybe probably two weeks if you work a job or if you're doing other stuff on the side. It's going to take you a couple weeks to narrate. Then it's going to take you another week or so to edit that book and produce it and master it and do all the parts that go into that. Uh, beyond that, audiobooks versus freelancing, the approach is pretty much the same. Whenever I go into audition for audiobooks, I am sending a vocal audition. I'm reading straight from the manuscript that the author puts out there. They say, this is what I want you to audition with. It's kind of like on freelancing, if someone were to give you a sample article to write, if you wanted to write articles, they might say, okay, here, write this article. We'll see how you do. And based on that, we will hire you. Well, that's what the auditions are. Uh, you're going to be on ACX.com probably. You'll read the audition. 
and you'll narrate it, and you'll produce it to production standards. So it actually takes a lot more time to audition on ACX and for audiobooks than it does to write up a blog post and apply to freelance gigs. Because you have to do this with every single audiobook that you might be interested in. So no matter what audiobook it is, you're going to have to put in that time to narrate one to two pages of audio and then edit it and then master it and produce it to full production standards. So it could, you know, maybe it's only three to five minutes of reading, but it takes you half an hour to an hour to complete that whole process. So you have to be thinking about that because it's not going to take you that long to do that in the freelance world. So those are two big differences. Moving beyond that, the uh, one of the big client differences, let's talk about clients versus freelance clients. So freelance versus audiobooks, uh, authors do not respond quickly. Now, this is kind of a thing in the freelance world too. Many Upwork clients don't respond very quickly, but on the audiobook side, they're likely to just send you the manuscript and if you don't ask them any questions, you, they may have no con, uh, communication with you for like until the book is done. So you guys may not talk to each other again until you upload the book and they tell you it sucks and they want all these changes. Like that's how it can go. They're not uh, back and forth clients usually. Some of them are. And if you're the kind of person who demands that from your, your clients, then you can probably find that. But my experience in general has been that free or uh, audiobook authors – They just want to put their book out there. They want you to narrate it. And then they want to get a finished product that's ready to go live and make some money. Freelance, on the other hand, it's there's a lot more back and forth. You'll find yourself uh, chatting back and forth with clients. Not always. Some clients kind of disappear, but many clients will want to work closely with you because they want to make sure that the product is done right. So that's a couple of differences in that regard. Is there any similarities? I mean, the main similarities are just in the way the work works out. You know, it's still freelance work either way you go, technically, because audiobooks, you're probably producing them from home. Uh, Freelance work, you're doing from home. I think overall, audiobooks are an interesting path to pay, but I don't think they're going to be an option for most people. After doing this for a couple of, what am I on? My second month now, going into my second month, I have my first two books published live on revenue split. I have earned my first six sales, which I have no idea how much that is, but I know it's not very much. And I've got two novels in the works. I'm just finishing up one novel, working on editing it. This novel, I've been working on it for weeks now because I'm only narrating a couple hours in the morning. And this was a 20 chapter novel with seven hours worth of reading. So just got through the reading part after a couple of weeks, and now I've got to go in and edit this thing and master it and produce it, and that's going to take even more time. Hopefully it sells well at the end, but I have no guarantees. Now, you don't have to get paid on revenue split. There's other ways you can get paid, and that's something we should talk about is the per-finished hour potential. So with audiobooks, you have options for revenue split or you have options for per finished hour rates. If you take the per finished hour rates, if you can find clients who will pay you that, then you're going to narrate the book and you're going to finish the book and publish it and all that stuff. And then you're going to get paid before it goes live. You're going to get paid your fixed rate. And let's say that rate is $50 an hour because you're on ACX. So you do a three hour book, that's $150 that you make from that. So a three hour book, you could get you might be able to get that done pretty quickly once you get the hang of it and you can make a quick 150 bucks. So one of the benefits of audiobooks over freelancing is that it actually can be pretty simple to get a higher, uh, to get to full-time rates once you get good at this. So because most people aren't charging 50 bucks, I mean, on ACX, you'll find a lot of $50 gigs, uh, $50 per finished hour which per finished hour includes everything, the narration, the editing, the mastering, all of that stuff. As you grow, and a lot of people like to think the industry standard is $250 per finished hour. So you can see how if you were charging $250 per finished hour and you do a seven hour book, that's gonna be a full monthly income for you. And you may not need to do anything else. So this is one of the, the valuable pieces of audiobooks over freelancing is that once you get established a little bit, and you can charge those higher rates, or even just the industry standard of $250 per finished hour, then 
it's not that hard to see how you can get a full-time income because you can your whole focus for the month needs to be on finding that one book that one author who's willing to pay those rates the $250 per finished hour or higher and They've got a seven hour book, they've got a 13 hour book, something where by the time you finish that book, yeah, it's gonna take you the whole month maybe, or half the month or whatever, but at least you're going to create a full-time income. And in the meantime, you can be taking other gigs too. So you may be narrating multiple books at a time. You may have your one book that is a full-time income book, and then you have something in the background that's revenue split that you're hoping will go big and make you a lot of money. Because at any time, a revenue split author might blow up. They could be the next J.K. Rowling, and you narrated that book, and you're getting forty, you're getting uh, half of the forty percent of the profits that come to the author and narrator through ACX. So you start to make a lot of money. Now you have a consistent full time income. You're not going to find that with freelancing. So with freelancing, it's much more challenging to find jobs that are going to pay you a full monthly rate, uh, just like off the cuff. Usually, you're going to have to work with a you're going to have to work with clients for a couple months maybe. You're going to have to start out with something smaller. Let's say you're doing let's say they hire you for some blog posts and you want to turn that into a full-time income. Well, you're not going to get on the phone with them and just boom, get full-time income. Most people aren't. You're going to start writing for them. You're going to write one post and that post is going to be good and then you're going to go to two posts or three posts and after a couple of weeks, they realize how awesome you are at writing because you've been trying so hard and doing so well. They're like, you know what? I'm going to raise your rates a little bit or I'm going to send you some more because I like that you're delivering quickly and so it starts to build up and maybe by the end of a couple of months, you've got a steady part-time income. Or maybe eventually they do build up to that next level and they say, you know what, I want to hire you on full-time rates if you only work for me. You can get to this much faster, I think, in audiobooks, but there's a catch because with audiobooks, there's a learning curve. It's a big learning curve. I've been learning every single day since I started this. So I've had to learn how to do like vocal training because I've never trained my voice before, never done that at all. I've had to learn how to read books. Um... I can read just fine, but narrating books, voice acting, becoming somebody who can put those emotions into the book, that's not something I've ever had to do. So now I'm having to learn that. Uh, the pacing, the speed, all of that, how to edit and master and produce books in my editing software, how to set up my studio, how to get the sound quality down, how to get mouth clicks removed. All of these things are parts of this process. And once you get those down and once you're good at narration, or at least okay at narration, then you can start charging industry standards and start finding people who are willing to pay you those rates. But until you get to that point, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. You might start at $50 per finished hour. Some people start at even less. But I still think that once you're there, once you have a process down for it, you can get to your whole focus for the month can be on finding that one single client that's got that book that's going to give you that full-time income. Whereas with freelancing, most of the time you're going to need multiple clients. You're going to need five clients or 10 clients, or if your rates are high enough and you do it, I mean, once you get established as a freelancer, yeah, sure, you can build full-time rates for a single client. But that's not been my experience with most people. Most people are, they have multiple clients at any given time, which is totally fine, but that's so they can build up to that $2,000 a month or $3,000 a month or whatever that full-time income is for them. They need multiple clients because they finish a project and a client drops off. They finish this project, a client drops off. So they got money coming in, but then they also have money going out. With uh, audiobooks, you can set yourself up for months out at a time. So you're narrating one book at a full-time rate maybe and you let clients know, they reach out to you or you reach out to them and you say, hey, I'm booked up through this month. I'm not going to be finished with this book. I can't take it on another book until next month. But if you want that, then full-time rates or here's my PFH rates. And they say, okay. And then you can book people out months in advance. And by doing that, you can create sort of a consistent full-time income. Now, I'm saying this all theoretically because I haven't been in this long enough to do that. I'm not good enough at audiobooks to even have that yet or at least I don't feel like I am. Um, but if I really go forward into this, if I stick with audiobooks, if that ends up being my big thing, then the answer would be to spend a lot of focus on getting that one gig that is going to generate those rates consistently month over month 
uh, or that one author and then finding the next author or finding authors who have books in a series where they're willing to pay for one and then the next one and creating a full-time income so that I could do revenue split jobs in the background and be building it both ways. You would cover the short term, you would cover the long term. You're not going to have that with freelancing as much. Instead, you're going to be mostly picking up multiple clients and trying to find enough clients and enough work that you can generate consistent full-time rates. So it's a little bit harder in that regard. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for today, I think. That's enough about audiobooks, freelancing, just some pros and cons of each. I think they both have benefits. Uh, In the end, if you need money fast, you need to go with freelancing. It's much faster to get to pay. If you need money, if you don't need money, if you have a job and you want to just pick up some extra stuff on the side, maybe try audiobooks. If you've got the studio space, uh, you don't have to have a full-blown studio like I have. You need to be able to get your room quiet enough for it. But maybe that can be something to create an extra income for you. It could be a much better deal if you end up hooking up with a good author who takes off and you get a revenue split on their book. That can be awesome because that's seven years that you get that revenue split. And then, I don't know, I think it continues year by year after that. There's a lot of frustrating stuff in the audiobook world that I haven't seen in the freelance side of things. And it's really not... Maybe I'll give you some of that in some more videos later on. But just know that if you get into the audiobook realm, it's not really a friendly place. I, I feel like the people in this space like to say they're friendly, but it's not a friendly space. It is highly competitive. You've got people who are competing at all different levels, and it's almost... This is just a vibe I get, so I don't want anyone to take this as the word of God. Even if I am God, it doesn't matter. Um... What I want you to take away is that the general vibe I get after being in this space for a little bit is that people are putting on this mask. They're wearing this mask that says, hey, I'm here to help you or I want to give you and share advice with you. But on this side of the mask, it's like, no, I want to like slit your throat because I don't want you taking money out of my pocket. I don't want you taking potential authors away from me. There's a lot more competition on ACX than uh, Upwork because there's less books. There's a lot less work on ACX and other uh, narration websites. Jeez, having brain farts. Then there is on Upwork where you've got clients from all over the world. You've got clients looking for many different skill sets. On ACX, they're just looking for one thing. They're looking for a good voice, the right voice, and sometimes that just means being the voice that's got clean audio. So, lots more competition. For that reason, if you are not a very competitive person, if you are not someone who is in it to win it, if you are not someone who tries your very hardest, but instead would rather like do put in less work or would like things to be a little bit easier, then audiobooks are not the way to go for you. F- stick with freelancing for for that side of things. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. If you guys have any questions, let me know in a comment down below. I'll try and answer them. I'm trying to come up with the freelance topics so we can earn the audiobook topics. We'll probably get back into freelancing a little bit. I know I say I'm getting out of it, but it just like sucks me back in every single time. There, I don't think that I can escape freelancing because I think that some part of it actually fused with my soul and so I'll never escape it not totally anyway but audiobooks they're out there that's an option for you it is free to start just like Upwork I've already made my first sales just a few days ago so it is possible I just don't know how uh, how much it's going to take to make it into something yet but anyway if you got comments drop them down below I'm Lex DeVille don't know what else to say to you guys so subscribe like notifications all that shit and i will see you next time